it's four o'clock, uh, what to call the meeting to order. Um, it's been, uh, I don't know what, six, five, six, seven years since this court has met, but uh, appreciate everybody coming out. If you would, please stand for our invocation. Of play like that's gone to the Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to meet in the service of the county. We just ask that uh, we watch over the proceedings and ask us to act accordingly and appropriately. We ask all these things in my son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item two is old business, we have none. Um, item three, under new business, we have a variance request. Um, v-19032. I'd like to ask Justin what the county's recommendation is. I'd like to, uh, for the record, say that we're going to open up this for a public hearing. Uh, yes, sir. This is a variance request for a three point two one acre tract of property off of Burnt Mountain Ridge Road. Um, the variance request is to be able to uh, sell an acre to the adjoining property owner. Um, the reason why this variance has to be requested is because this property falls under the Mountain Protection Act, which only allows uh, one residence per ten acres. Um, and since this is an existing non conforming parcel, any any lesser division of the property would um, violate the intent of that. Um, if I may trim um, the recommendation for staff for the lot size requirements um, is that it be denied. Be, that it be denied. Um, but in addition to the memo, I would like to hereby incorporate the entirety of the office's file and video recording of the Board of Appeals hearing, including but not limited to all witness testimony, in order that this information be made part of the record and shall be available for review. Uh, is Mr. or Ms. Tom Thomason? Richardson. Tom, Tom Richardson. Oh, I'm sorry. Thomas Richardson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it, it has... Thomas Richardson and Francis Thomas. So. This is Fran and this is uh, David Robinson who's a property owner who wants to buy the one acre. And uh, can you hold that there? Mm -hmm. The uh, Burnt Mountain subdivision is shown on this map. And the Mount Protection Act is to protect the fauna and the flora and the uh, soils which are not as thick and not as uh, robust maybe at those elevations and then Pickens County has has added to that a 10 acre restriction but this subdivision was created in the 70s and none of the lots in the subdivision are conforming nor will they ever be conforming uh, many of the lots are two acres. There are, there are several lots that are one acre. I'd say the average lot is two acres. Uh, there's, uh, these are the lots in question outlined here. And a one acre lot was just built on right across from it. And that house was completed this year. David, the uh, lot owner who wants to buy the acre, lives here at, uh, on two acres. This is the lot in question. It is now 3.2 acres. Up until 2017, it was two lots. Uh, a one acre, 1.03 acre, and a two, point, uh, two acre lot. The builder who bought them, uh, combined them, went through a process, had to go to the homeowners association somewhere in the county had to get approval. Whether he did that because of homeowner association fees or I'm not sure why he did it. Uh, I own this acre here and this is where my house is. So David and I uh, are the bookends for the lot in question. 
After I agreed to buy it and talking with David, he informed me he had an underground propane tank that was over the line here. And the, I'm, I'm supposing, I'm making a supposition, that the reason it happened was that the previous owner who built the lot that David has, built on the lot, because of the lay of his lot, ended up with his house right at the 15-foot offset from the line. And so when David came in and, and put in a underground propane tank, he inadvertently buried it on the other lot. He had, he had approached these lot owners on a resolution. He never heard back from them. Uh, they must have forgotten that. They did not reveal that to me in the, uh, when I bought it. So after I bought it, this was news to me, and when David uh, addressed it, and we were talking about a solution, he asked if he could buy what had been this one acre where the propane tank is, and it would also give him some offset from his house. Uh, since I own this lot, which is 3.95 acres, and, I, and the remaining lot that I would be left with is two acres, 2.2 acres, I saw no problem with that. What we are not asking to do is increase the density at this point. Both David and I are authorized one residence on the lots we occupy. The lot in question is authorized one resident, one residence. By, by selling David this one acre and his adding it to his lot, it doesn't change the number of residents authorized. The one acre does not become, as it was, a standalone lot that you can sell and build on. It becomes a part of David's lot. So you'd have one house there authorized, one house here, and one house here, which is the way it is today. All we're doing, if you will, is resolving the problem of his protein tank and his his feeling that he's would like a little more privacy beyond the 15 feet that he now has from the property line. I believe that the request is consistent with the Mountain Protection Act's intent. The work David's done on his uh, two acres here reflects nothing but natural uh, fauna and flora and bushes and mountain law. And frankly, I think that one acre would benefit from some attention from David, and, and the subdivision would benefit from some attention. And I think that's reflected in the Homeowners Association Board's approval of our request. So we're not asking to add residents, we're just asking to move an acre from this lot over to David's lot. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? For the board? Yeah, Chairman. The, yeah, the lot, I have a different piece of paper. I can't see your numbers on there. I think this is pretty well equal to what that is. Yeah. If you can look, if you want to look at this, this one has your name on it, which is lot 5B. Yes, is that where your residence is now? And 4B is just a vacant piece of property. Is that correct, or is there? That's right. That 3.2 acres is vacant. Okay. And my other question is, Commissioner Robinson, your house, you, it is real close to the property line. Did I hear that right? Uh, yes, they built it, uh, I later learned, 15 feet off of the sideline, okay. which was the middle of my thing. Yeah. Was built. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood all that. Thank you. I'm going to ask a question about the uh, the one acre lot, was it not attached at one time to the Robinson lot? No, sir. It's always been a standalone always lot. Been a standalone. And when he bought it in 2017, he bought two lots. One was one acre, one was 2.2. Sometime after he bought it in 2017, he made application to the Homeowners Association and to the county to combine them. You're talking about the owner of the lot. Before you, my predecessor. Okay, okay. He bought he bought two lots, the one acre lot 
which is you the one you're asking about. Right. It was never Davis. It was always a standalone lot owned by the same people who sold both lots to the builder. Okay. The one acre lot and the two acre lot. He then combined them in the, into a 3.2 acre lot sometime after 2017. And what we're trying to do is undo that, not for the purpose of building on that one acre, but for the purpose of selling it to David to resolve his propane tank being buried on that lot and the closeness of the property line to his house. Was there a, ever a survey done to combine those two lots? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I assume, sir, you'll be getting it resurveyed and combining it into your, uh, is it 2B or on this map? Is it 2B? Uh, yes, I'll be, I'll be combining the by uh, survey. Okay. So David will have three acres. The middle lot will become 2.2, and I'll remain over here with 3.95. So essentially, at least three B on that map there will go away because it'll be absorbed into your right. two B. Yes. Did you say this was combined after 2017? Yes, sir. The builder bought it in 2017. He bought two lots. These two, three B and four B. Sometime after that, I don't know, not certain of the date. He made petition to the Board of uh, Homeowners Association and to the county to combine these two lots into one for whatever reason. Taxes, homeowners association fees, whatever reason he gave. But that's why uh, it's now 3.2 acres and that one lot, that one acres in question. We'd like to undo that solely for the purpose of selling it to David, not for the purpose of build, if going back and being authorized to, as a standalone one acre lot that you could build on separately. We're not asking to do that. We're only asking to move it over so it's under his lot, in his, combined and part of his lot. So I would have uh, 3.95, I would have 3.95, excuse me, 2.2 .2 acres, and David would have 3 point acres, and that he would pick up the one acre. And the residents, again, would not change. It's authorized three residents. There are two residents today, with one authorized in the center, and after this change, it would not change. It would still be three residents. We're not changing the density, we're just moving the acre. So the ownership of the acre. In your application, you said that uh, you originally bought the lot for privacy. Did I read that correctly? Yes. So is it your intent to build on the lot? No. You said so the two acres you don't intend to build on? No. But then, go ahead. Why wouldn't you just combine it with yours and then put the acre with his? If, you were, if it was becoming part of your additional three acres, I don't think that's an issue. I can't sell the acre to him. The Planning Commission says the Mountain Protection Act as written by Pickens County requiring a 10 acre lot above 2,200 feet affects this lot because it was combined after the ordinance. Since the county just turned here, Phil, can I ask you a question? Sure. Am I, am I Thinking that through right, if he doesn't intend to build on it, is there still a problem if the lot just disappears and becomes part of two different existing lots? Well, the, the way that I've written is it, it, any new division would require a 10 acre minimum um, because once it's divided, there, there can't really be a... Um, it, it, it would be difficult to enforce not, not building on it, the non-conforming lot. These, these were obviously in place long before the Mountain Protection um, Act came in place, if that answers your question. Well, no, not exactly. So the, 
would seem to me that the objection of the Mount Protection Act would be that if you've got a one acre lot that you can build on, that's a problem. And then if you've got a 2.2 .2 acre lot that you can build on, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. But if both those lots go away and become part of the two property owners on either side, I, I don't see how that violates the but intent the, of the law. The, 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 what the, the crux of the, the, the issue is right now, there isn't a separate one acre lot. That there is no, if you look in our tax digest, the way, it, the way those three lots are mapped, that one acre lot is a portion of, of, of the larger two acre tax parcel. So the one acre does not exist separately now at all. It is part of a, of a, a non-conforming lot, but a, a pre-existing. Um. But up until it was combined after 2017, it was grandfathered and you could build on it and sell it separately. One of my problems of taking your action is this line is the, is the Pickens-Dawson line. And so my, my house is on the Dawson line and this lot is on Pickens' side. And to combine these two lots requires one of those two taxing agencies to give up the right to tax and Chances of that happening, I doubt, are very high. <laughs> because now I pay a property tax in Dawson County and property tax in Pickens County for two different lots. One's the three acre, 3.2, and one's the 3.75. We're, we're trying to return to this layout of the lots and only change it by separating the one acre and selling it to David. We're not trying to build another residence. We're not trying to change the density. We're trying to change the correct the issue of the propane tank and his proximity to his property line. Could we put a stipulation in the sale agreement that says that if we do this, it can't be? Justin and I have talked about that, and, and it's, the difficulty in that is enforcing it. What the, what the act prohibits is the act that he is asking for. It prohibits the further subdivision of a lot less than 10 acres when it, when it exists above 2,200 feet. Right. And so he's asking y'all to make an exception for the act. And you have those four criteria that you can base your exception on. And so if you, if you think it fits, well, I think it's got to be all of them. I think it's all of those four. And so if you think it hits those, See what after y'all after y'all close your hearing, you've got 32 days to render a written decision, and that decision must have a, a findings of fact. And so, what you'll have to do in order to have a valid, if you if you permit this, you would have to go through these four criteria there, and show how each one of those are met by the applicant to justify the exception to the act. And then you have to adopt those those written criteria. But it is legal to do this. Am I correct? It is legal to do this with a variance. You it, you have the you have the right to ask this board for a for a variance for an exception to the Mountaintop Protection Act. They can only grant that if they can find, they can make findings of fact that your that the justification for granting that meets all of those four requirements. And those are the four that Justin talked to you about in, in the beginning. Um, and I think you got them in your package. I can read them if you don't. But you would agree that the Mountain Protection Act is an umbrella under which Pickens County has indicated that to be 10 acres. That's not part of the Georgia. That's not a requirement by the state of Georgia. 
That's a requirement by Pickens County. It is a Pickens County ordinance that sets the 10-acre right. minimum right. above 2,200 feet. But, it's, but we were required to adopt the Mountaintop Protection Act. Yes, Obviously, sir. You're not required to adopt 10 acres. We were required to set an acreage, and I don't yes. know what, I cannot remember, it, it's been 30 years since I drafted that, and I cannot remember what the minimum acreage was. I um, know we could go There is no minimum acres. in Gilmer County. So I just, well, I just I, not everybody has a 10 acre minimum. Right, but some of them do have more, I believe. I, I think that was looked at. Well, but what? Pickens County Ordinance sets 10 acres. And so, if you look at those four criteria, if, if you if you if you feel like you can sign on to findings of fact that meet those four criteria, then you can grant the or the variance. If you cannot, where it meets all four of them, then you then you don't have the authority to grant the, the variance. Well, we, we, if we grant it, would that be that presence that somebody else come and do the same thing? That's something. Well. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that applies to for a variance from the mountaintop protection act would get it, but you are, I mean, you are setting a written record as to how you interpret these four factors. And so, from that, from that aspect, I'm, you may be right if we're talking about people in that particular subdivision. And if it's similarly situated as these people, and if you're talking about somebody on the outside of this particular subdivision in a, you know, in the terrain is different than I saw. Well, this subdivision, if uh, five years down the road, some similar situation came up, they could always revert back if we just they could certainly look. decide to do that, that they could revert back and say, well, this was set, presence was set on this five years ago, I shouldn't have a problem. Well, they would certainly look at your written, at the written record of prior variance requests. Right. There's not a, as you, as the chairman pointed out when we began, there isn't a, a you know, there, there aren't many findings that you've made over the years. Any other questions or comments? Any way we can make a whole vote? Pardon? Any way we can make a whole vote? He's wanting to know is, is, can we meet before we vote? I mean, we, we, we can always delay and we can discuss. Delay or something. What, you, what you can certainly do is adjourn, is, is you know, make a motion to, to adjourn to a date certain and then come back after, after y'all consider it individually, you, you can come back and have another meeting subject to the Open Meetings Act for deliberation. And then eventually, within 32 days, you've got to render a written decision. And then I don't, I, I think you have to have another meeting to adopt those written findings. I would assume y'all would dictate them and one of us would, the staff or somebody would write it down for you and then you would have the staff would send it to you for edits, and then you'd have another meeting where you would formally adopt those as your findings. We and actually then, did it by email last time. Yeah, you could do, certainly do that. I, I do think, though, you'd have to have another meeting where they're formally adopted. Um, I don't know if we did that last time or not, but... No, we, 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 we can remember. <laughs> <laughs> Deliberate, you know, here as long as we want to, or we can motion to... Postpone or whatever, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Before you postpone, I need. Oh, I'm not bad. I'm, okay. just, I'm just laying I'm just, out the options. I didn't want someone to jump up and say, "Hey, <laughs> um, is it possible to get a, a copy of the land use intensity ordinance?" Because I mean, this is part of it here, you know, on, on how conditions criteria for getting variance. But I'd like to see some other. You, you mean the mountaintop protection act? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, you can serve. You know, it, it, it's something I think would be worth, worthwhile to read over. Mm -hmm. I've read it before, but it's been a long time. You know, that way, you know, because there's probably reading over it, there's questions we'd have to ask to explain different parts of it. You know, we're not familiar with how ordinances are written, and some of that's 
you know, legalese, it has to be there that we need to explain to, to in regular terms for I guess. I am, I am not a lawyer, but the, the thing that I, that lot, that one acre lot, was grandfathered from, from the 10 acre ordinance written by Fannin County. It was accepted and it could have been built on and it could have been sold separately like the lot across from it has recently been built on one acre. It was non-conforming, it was grandfathered, and what we've done, the builder did after 2017, is he combined them, and they're saying they lost that grandfather. Right. Right. And what we're saying is we don't want to go back to building, we just want to change who owns the acre and what lot it belongs to. When did you purchase the lot? August of this year. And did you understand that at that time that it was uh, that it could not be split? I understood that it. The, here's my specific recommendation during uh, the uh, due diligence period. I talked to the planning commission director, who said, "No, you can't." He said, "I can get a an opinion from the county attorney." I said, please. After he hung up, I thought to myself, wait a minute, if I get a decision and it's no, that, does that mean if I want to ask for an exception, the decision's already been made? So I called him back maybe the next day and said, I'd like to hold off on that. He said, I've already spoken to the county attorney and it can be done with a variance. And that's where we are. That's my recollection of the conversation. And, and that's correct. He can ask, he goes in front of this board to ask for a variance of the enforcement of, of this county ordinance. But you, you only have the authority to grant that if you find that his request meets all four of those, those um, criteria in your enabling act. And I believe, I don't know the criteria I've written, but this was not something I created. This is not something I knew about before I bought the property. This is something I found out about after in talking to my neighbor. That the propane tank was under the ground on my side of the property line. And so that's why we're where we are. And David said, could we resolve this by you selling me that acre? So you, could, said, you could rent it to him. I was going to say, could, could, they, could they create a permanent easement? Would that violate? No, you can do, and, and we, I, I believe, I'm thinking of an attorney that did that earlier, you can do some kind of an easement agreement either, and as some as you know, you, you have um, exclusive easements and non-exclusive easements. So most of your easements are non-exclusive in that. The, the property owner that granted you that easement can also use that property as long as it's not inconsistent with your easement rights. Whereas an exclusive easement, basically, um, whoever the, the grantor of that doesn't have their ability to use the property anymore. It is exclusively the use of the of the easement holders. So, would an exclusive easement then solve? The that, I mean, that could address the, the encroachment problem if that's the. If that's your question, he can even license it. Yes, but licenses are revocable. Well, yeah. Whereas the the, the easement might be a better solve the problem solution, but but that's more legal advice and not for the appeal side. Yeah. I guess. Let, let me let me touch on something while I've interrupted your train of thought. One of one of you were asking about deliberations. If you have a question, if, if you as a board are meeting and have a and have a legal question for me or want to consult with the attorney, you have the right to go in executive session for the purpose of consulting for, with the attorney. You do not have the right to go in executive session to deliberate among yourselves, and you, know, and you can't just have me in the room and deliberate if that makes sense too. Darn. If y'all, if you if you adjourn, if you adjourn to a date certain. And, and don't make a decision today. 
two of you can talk on the phone about this, but three of you cannot. That would be a breach of the, of the act. And then, of course, any five of y'all can call me or Justin if, if you ever want to. Now, you're not allowed to, once the chairman closes the meeting, you're not allowed to consider anything except for the record that has been presented to you today, which would be the, the, the variance application, land developments package, both of which you've gotten. And then I think um, we will also supplement the record with the giving the five of you a copy of the Mount Top Protection Act. The way your Enabling Act is written, the evidence can be introduced at any time. I think that's been asked by a board member in land development has said they will they will enter that into the record. I think I need before I say that these four items are are fine, I think I need to have some long time to get my head wrapped around it. Uh, I mean that's my own personal thing. But me, I think it'd be more information and this is not enough information to make my decision as far as these four criteria is concerned. I need a little bit more clarification on this path. Can you send us the information on Bart? Yes. Question. And then, like I said, you, you can make a motion to you know, postpone and, and adjourn or whatever, and you know, we can have to be back. But if I make a suggestion, sure. you have the right, obviously, to adjourn. I would suggest that you adjourn to a date certain because you've got that 30. You have to render a decision within 32 days from today. So, uh, you know, if y'all could, if, if you are going to adjourn to, to make further considerations, you may want to, before you do that, talk among yourselves about when's a good time to reconvene. 32 days. They have 32 days. Somebody's going to write this down. And I don't see it being one of the five of y'all, so it's probably one of us that's writing it down, and then you're going to want to edit it or review it. And then somebody's going to have, you're going to have to be in a meeting to make a motion to adopt the, those findings, which is probably going to be a second meeting, is what I'm getting at. So if you could. Well, you know, I don't think we need the world of time. I just need some quiet time to sit down and, you know. Maybe next week. Well, no, that's a problem. I leave Tuesday, and I'm gone till the end of the month. So okay. We can meet before then, or we can wait. I'm, I'm available on the second of well, November. I don't. Don't throw anything at him. But as long as four of y'all can show up in the room, there's a the act provides that the, the remaining board member can call in if you choose to do that. You may not. That might not be an option, but that's an option I don't have. I do have a question before your discussion today. Mr. Richardson, Mr. Robinson, do either one of you have more that you'd like to tell us since it looks like you know, we might be concluding here to go into further discussion? Is there anything else you'd like to add? I mean, you presented a, your case. I just want to make, give you the opportunity while we're all five of us are here to final thoughts, if you would. Please. Yes. Uh, for for me and my wife, the, the solution, the good solution, would be for us to have that extra acre. Uh, my wife is a fanatical gardener. In the last, in the 14 years that we've been on that lot, she has filled in every plantable space above the trees on the acreage we've got that's fairly level. And if we could get that additional frontage along there where it's level, that's perfect. Um, we're both getting old in age, and when you get on land that slopes like that, it's a little hard to do a lot of landscaping. Uh, 
so for us, it not only solves our problem with the septic tank and with having a little more space from the property line for our house, but it gives her space to continue doing what she's been doing for the last 14 years. So we would appreciate it if you take that into consideration. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Richardson, do you have anything you want to add? I think Tom covered it. I, I mean, he did a well job. I just want to give you the opportunity while we're... I would just like to emphasize that the intent of the Mountain Protection Act was to preserve the soils and the habitat and the fauna and the flora. And we're doing that. And we're doing that consistent with the intent of the act. And we are not, I emphasize, we are not changing the density of the residents and houses that can be built on that combined acreage. Today it's three houses on those three, David, my lot in question, and the lot we live at. And when we do this, if we're allowed to do it, we'll still only be authorized the same three houses my house on mine, one house on the two point, remaining 2.2, and one house on David's. We're not trying to circumvent that intent. The density remains the same, and the density in the subdivision is consistent with that original lot layout that I had on the board. There are a number of one acre lots in the subdivision, one of which was built on and completed this year, right across from David's house. We are doing, the board of, of uh, HOA board is, I think, giving the sense of the community as to our request, and they are saying yes, and I would leave it at that. That's all I have. So, um, if I understand you correctly, we have to answer individually all four of the items yeah. and say yes or no. This is this is this, and this is that, and this is why we did this. You you have to make a finding that shows that the applicant has met all four of these these right. criteria. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and if I may. One of those findings is, does this create an un, I don't, an undue, undue hardship. an undue hardship? And that is, I would submit, subjective. Is it a hardship for David to pick that tank up and put it in the back of his yard where he's been working on for 14 years in landscaping? Is it a hardship for me to commit that egress into there for, for my heirs. Is it a hardship for him to be within 15 feet of the property line? To me, those are things to be considered. And, and, and I submit that we have a solution that doesn't change the original layout of the subdivision. It doesn't go against the intent of the Mountain Protection Act. We are fully supportive of that, and that one acre will be improved as regards to the Mountain Protection Act if David has it. That's... I don't think it's a question of your intent at all. I just want to make sure that we're doing things yes, legally the right way. Yes, sir. That's the... Uh, that's the... Uh, always it's... Things like this always comes up that it's like, wow, I never saw that come. But I mean, it's it kind of throws you a curveball. Right. So, but I'm not trying to, we're not trying to gain an advantage by building another house. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we, yeah, I'm we, come, we come to this as a, a consistent with the density. Right. I'm, like, I'm like Ron, I mean, I don't question your. Your honesty whatsoever, either one of you. I think that y'all, what y'all were saying is the absolute truth, but you know, we've got to abide by, try to abide by the ordinance and 
I guess for lack of a better term, letter of the law to do right by the county, whether you agree with it or not. So it's and it's really about one acre, whether he owns it or he owns it. You know, that's yeah, think, what this is about. Yeah. Who's going to own the acre and who's going to take care of it? And, uh, So with 3.95 and 3.2 that I now have, I've got more than enough. And uh, I, I just, I know, so thank you for the opportunity. And his would be bigger and closer to the intent of the Mountain Protection Act. Well, the, the enemy is not us, it's the Mountain Protection Act. It's the ordinance under the Mountain Protection Act. Yeah. The Mountain Protection Act does not require 10 acre minimums. It's a Pickens County ordinance that Gilmer County does not, is not consistent with. In Gilmer County, it is the intent of the Mountain Protection Act on slopes and on fauna, flora, rich areas that you come in with a building plan and you justify what you're going to do consistent with preserving those things. And the rural subdivision rules in Gilmer County apply at 2,200 feet like they apply at 1,000 feet. But there's extra consideration at the 2,200 feet, not on minimum lot size, but on the building plan or the site plan. That's as I understand it from my discussions with the planning director of Gilmer County last week. I believe I've quoted her accurately. My question to her when I read the Mount Protection Act in the Gilmer County ordinance was, where is the limit on the 10 acres? And she says, we do not have a limit on lot size. I asked that specific question after reading the ordinance. So, for clarification, the county line runs through the property. Is this lot entirely in Pickens County? That lot is. So my lot next to it. That's the one that's half Dawson, half Pickens. Right. The one I, the, the bigger lot, the 4B. Is, is half in Dawson and half in Pickens. 3.95, right, where I have a residence, is, half, is taxed in Dawson and has the line running through it. This lot is fully in Okay, so the comments from Gilmer County are just research on your part. Right, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not. Just trying to make sure I understood, I thought. No, I'm just problem. saying that the considerations in Gilmer are different, but they're all both following what they view as the Mountain Protection Act. And this, this subdivision is never going to be compliant with the mountain, with the 10 acres that, get, that Pickens County requires. It, it's, it's not. I showed you the lot layout. If the average lot is two acres, it's never going to be compliant. And unless somebody buys it and, and levels some residences. Some date certain? I don't. I don't think. That, I think a couple of members don't want to vote, so I think we need to. That's uh, that's up to the all. Answer. You know, somebody can make a motion to to have a future date and what have you. Know, we can discuss what date works, or like I said, I'm like I say, I'm. It's up to y'all to bring forth the motions. How much time do you need? Hmm? How much time do you need? We're, we're going to have an informal discussion. To figure out, there's no sense making a motion and trying to figure out when the date is afterwards. <laughs> Next Monday. I'm, I'm Monday the 21st. Let me double check. No, Monday the 19th. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Monday the 19th. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. And I, I don't have anything that I can't work around. That gives us enough, you know, six days. And we'll have the information from the county about the the actual ordinance itself, have time to go through it over the weekend and everything and get get it figured out and meet Monday That's night. plenty of time for me. Same time, okay? Yeah. Phil, the chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn to a date certain of October the 19th at 4 p.m. to continue considerations. We have a move. Do I hear a second for uh, October the 19th at 4 o'clock? Second. 
and we would second any discussion to uh, post or to meet next Monday at four o'clock. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. That closes this hearing for now. Until next Monday. Sorry, but have my asked to come back. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks um, for the opportunity. Thank you. More comments? Is there any more comments? When, when, would, when would we receive the ordinance? I'll send it to you when I get out of here. If you send it to by email? Yes, sir. Would that be okay? Okay. Or if y'all got it that long? Y'all got about five, ten minutes, I'll print y'all all the time. Uh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, if you have that for a hard copy. Yeah. yeah, give me about five, ten minutes. I'll look at the screen around. enough during the day. I just... <laughs> well, I sit and wait until I got a hard copy. Phil, it's some, can I have, after I've had a chance to look at everything, can I have a few minutes sure. of your time? Yeah, any, any of y'all can okay. call me and... I can talk to two of you at a time, but not three. <laughs> When's a good time to call you here today? Yeah, if I'm any time during the day, and if I'm not there, I'll probably I'll just let Sandy know that you leave her your name and number, and I'll call you back. If I have any questions, I'll call you. Be glad to. Any other board comments? Since we're having this meeting again, it, it is an open meeting to the public. Even though we're discussing this, I mean, it is open if they want to, you yes. know, the folks are just here. Yeah. They, they, back. We, we yeah. haven't closed the meeting, so yeah. it's still yeah. an open meeting. They have yeah. the right to leave. Well, they, unless you're meeting with me for legal yeah. stuff. And, you know, just for Mary's purposes, too, if she yeah. wants to uh, film it again. Mm -hmm. you know. No, she'll, I'm sure she'll be here. She'll <laughs> film it on public meetings. So. <laughs> um, That's all the discussion I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Are any other board comments? If not, um, public comments. I don't think there is any. Next uh, and final item is adjournment. Do I hear a move to adjourn? Okay. Um, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.